Today we are going to give you a tour of our studio and gallery. We are a production pottery studio and gallery here in Weaverville, North Carolina. And I have been promising to do this for quite some time. So today I'm actually going to do it so you all can see behind the scenes what our studio looks like. The back side of our studio, we have a 2,500 square foot studio and we start here on the back side with raw clay and so if i swing around over here we have a nice size garage door and we have two tons of clay delivered at a time to the studio and we um, bring it in here on pallets then the clay sets over here. We're just about ready to order again. And then we usually keep one ton in the studio and one ton outside the studio, right outside the garage doors. So here in the clay area, I have two potter wheels. Most things um, like tables and everything, we actually keep on wheels so we can move them around and use the tables for various things. So let me walk a little closer. Here is the wheel I am predominantly throwing on now. It was a handmade wheel that I just recently bought from um, a company called Barking Spider. And the reason I bought this wheel mostly was because he had a plaster bat system. And there are some of the plaster bats over there. And here are more down here on the table. And I wanted to really give this plaster bat system a go because you can throw your pots on the plaster bats and then they will pop off and the bonds will be smooth and you don't have to run a cutting wire underneath them. At least that is a the theory. Um, and I'm still kind of going through a learning process with that, but I think I like the plaster bats. So that is the first wheel. I have a second wheel right on the opposite side of it. And, um, and this one I usually do trimming on because Give and grip fits on it perfectly and it's all set up and all my trimming tools are there and there's a window right there. So this is the wheel throwing area and if I spin around we have our slab roller on wheels that we pull out when we use it. We actually don't use the slab roller that much. Um, myself and my assistants actually prefer the rolling pin method. We can get the clay more in the shape that we want using a rolling pin and we actually find that it's faster. So I was all excited about when I got that slab roller and to tell you the truth, we don't use it a lot, only for the largest of slabs. Um, in that corner, that table is also on wheels and I have two pieces of equipment there, a little arbor press that we almost exclusively use for these dies that are down here I'm gonna get close to. We do a lot of custom mugs with medallions on them and I make those uh, little uh, dies right there out of ceramic cow and we use the arbor press over here which is this little press right here to press the clay into those little molds for the medallions and then we put those on mugs so that's what that's used for this extra piece of equipment is just a tiny little drill press I used to make knobs for the Home Depot through Liberty Hardware and I used the drill press to drill the holes in the back of the knobs where the little screw fixtures go. So um, real quick, these are all plaster bats. They're over here by this wheel in different sizes and are not plaster, excuse me, double tempered masonite. And um, as a system I have used for probably 20 years, I still like it. We still use it on and off along with the new plaster bat system. So spinning around back past the garage door. Well, there's the garage door, but um, before that, this is a wear cart and we made our own custom plastic fitting over it to cover up the whole tire wear cart and then um, close it up with clips. And so once we make pots, we put it on that wear cart with lots of shelves and close it down to keep them at a moist um, kind of before leather hard to leather hard so we can put handles and those kind of things on it. So those, I have two of those great big wear carts and then I have several small ones that once they pop off there, we uh, put them on different carts that I'll show you shortly um, that are for drying and that we roll into the kiln room. So right here, what I'm looking at at the opposite side of the garage, 
garage door. I'm gonna back out a little bit. Those are my extruders. I have one for white clay and one for brown clay. Um, bought another potter out and it came with the extra extruder and I didn't think I would use it, but then I thought, well, it's a pain to clean out the clay all the time on those extruders. So I have one for white and one for brown and that has been a real nice addition. And I have bunches of dies for those. And so that is over there. So against that wall, um, and the opposite side of this wall is actually our kill room. But then here are a bunch of just our little tools, our stamps, our just all the accessories that we use and need for uh, our clay production prop part of the studio. And so I have this buffet that's sitting here with those urns. Um, that's just a great big buffet that actually came out of an old office. It's got shelves on the opposite side of it and it also is on wheels so we roll that guy around. But for the most part, that's where its home is. And then we use pegboard to put all our extra little tools that we usually need on a daily basis. And then over towards the hallway, you can see our first sink. We have several sinks in the studio and um, we do have a system on it to collect clay uh, that goes down through the sink, the drain. So let me pan around to this other side. I don't want to get you too dizzy. So here's the door that we originally started at that's in the middle back part of the studio. There is our pile of clay that I talked about. So we have a pug mill. We have a small pug mill, Peter Pugger. It does 45 pounds each time which is fine for us. Um, we're fine with about 45 pounds because we have a ram press and there sets the ram press, a bunch of pug clay that we've recently done. Um, another one of these wear carts that we put our pots in to keep them um, moist so the next day we can put handles or whatever on. I'll get a little closer when we go around this pallet and get over here to this corner. So. That is um, the ram press, and then right here uh, is holding all of the molds. We have about only about a dozen molds, actually. We don't do a lot on the ram press. The majority of our work is still hand-thrown. Um, but as I get to be a better mold maker, well, I will probably put more things on the ram press in the mold. And over here, these are just uh, retired bats that we use to catch um, the pieces as they come off the ram press. So that is all over there. So let me spin around again. And this, I my back is now facing that door that we started at. And this is looking down the hallway of the studio. So we have a nice, long, wide hallway. And beyond that, to the right is my chemical room. That's what I call it, the chemical room. I have all my various chemicals that I use to make my glazes because we make all our glazes ourselves are in these handy dandy dog food containers. And this is a nice size because it will hold about a 50 pound bag of chemicals depending on which chemical you have in the volume and that kind of thing. But I have found those to be very good. They lock down, they keep the place clean and tidy and chemicals from going, um, getting in the air so much. So I use those. I just added a handmade spray booth and um, we ha I haven't figured out yet how I'm gonna vent this out, but I'm gonna put a hole in the wall and vent it outside somehow. So that is here in the chemical room. There's another sink. The room's relatively small, so it's hard to get a good photograph. But, um, and then here is a shelf system that has a lot of my mold making stuff and some dyes and I don't know it just it, it's got some mason stains in it that kind of thing this is a slip master right here I use that mostly for making glaze not slip I decided I wanted to do slip pouring and make my own slip and then I decided I hated the process and I kept the equipment and then I turned it into a glaze mixer instead of a uh, slip mixer. And I've done that probably for a good 10 years, if not 15. And, um, and then recently when I bought that wheel, that particular potter had a um, hand, um, he built this mounted um, 
mixer for the wall that's a variable speed and I have switched from now the slip mixer to using this variable speed and boy has it made life a lot easier as far as mixing up ceramic cow for my molds or mixing up glaze so I can uh, put the bucket underneath that and let stuff mix and keep adding chemicals to it and then walk away from it and let it mix until it's all just the slurry I like and I can do other things and then come back to it. So that has been a really, really nice addition. Um, another shelf over here, another pegboard. We try to label where everything belongs so we don't spend a lot of time looking for something. Um, so ev not everything's labeled, but a lot of things are labeled here in the studio. So that is that. I'm gonna walk out of the chemical room, back into the hallway. So these are my smaller wear carts. We actually have four of these, and this is where we put the green wear once it's been signed and it's finishing to dry. These are actually like baker's racks. And um, so we just have those in the hallway. And when I'm trying to dry things out, like really, really dry before they go in the kiln, we will roll them into the kiln room. And so the kiln room is right next to these carts and so i'm gonna walk into the kiln room talk about that so i have four kilns and scup is definitely my preference the scup pks which is the prep um, professional level these are 1227s these two here i um, inherited an olympic i didn't know how i feel it, felt about it when i got it but it's a beast um, it works really well well built um, and we use that for bisking and then it's always nice to have a smaller kiln um, for when you just want to do smaller loads. So that's the smallest one. And that's a 1027 scut. So this is the kiln room. I'm going to pan up to the ceiling. The kiln room has a great big industrial vent system. So we suck out all the heat and the fumes out of the studio. I had an industrial company come in and take care of that. The kiln room has a great big window. We open up the window, we bring in fresh air through the window and suck out the fumes out of the ceiling. So this is just a brand new setup right there to the right of the window. That is how I am keeping all of my stilts for my kiln shelves and I'm really liking it. These are actually intended to be in your closet to um, have spices or something like that. I bought it at Lowe's and it's just a really nice system and we intend on staying a lot more organized with all of those. So because you have a lot of stilts when you have four kilns. And so we are not maximizing out our four kilns as of yet, although at Christmas time I would say this year we were firing them all as fast as we could. But that is the kiln room. We have bars on the window because the kilns do fire at night when we're not here. And we have cameras on the outside of the building and the cameras on the inside of the building um, to prevent anybody getting here and stealing or anything. And then down in this little corner here, I bought this little camera. And so I live about 10 minutes away from the studio. Well, not even that uh, long, but uh, we put the cameras on the computers so I can watch from home on my iPad what the kilns are doing. I can't adjust the kilns, but I can buzz over here if something goes wrong. So that is it for the kiln room. Back into the hallway. We are walking down the hallway. So to almost straight across from the kiln room is the glaze area. I've got a couple of carts set in there too, but I have all my glazes over here my my um i have this great big let me turn the line on real quick where is the light there we go okay so um this i added a couple years ago i've got a nice big hot plate that i bought at walmart and a nice big industrial pan and i melt my wax in that and dip all my pots in that and i can get almost every pot that we make um in this big waxing pan so I can wax the bottom. Now some pieces I do have to hand wax, but it's very few. I just didn't want to go any larger in this, but this is pretty nice size. So there, above that, I've got shelving for some of the things I like to use with my uh, glazes and some more shelving over here. 
Um, we've got buckets down here, um, smaller buckets for glazes that are accent glazes and great big, huge buckets for uh, glazes that we use a lot of. So that is the glaze area. This is a U-shaped countertop. It's probably, uh, I'd say about 14 by 14 square foot area where I glaze. So that's the only thing we do in this area. And we glaze at least three times a week in that area and in the kiln they go. So next to beyond the glaze area are the bisque shelves. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Across the hallway from the glaze area, just to reorient you, that is the kiln room door. Um, this is all new here. We built up storage for packing. We ship a lot of pottery out and a lot of large boxes out um, for wholesale. And so we built a whole system just for packing materials. And that is what is going down the hallway. We have a very, very wide hallway. Our ceilings are 10 feet tall. And so we are starting to utilize this and more streamline our, uh, our packing and shipping system. You just, you've got to get good at packing and shipping if you're gonna do the volume that we do. So that is what is across um, from the glaze area and just today we have added a peanut hopper which I think is going to be a great help that is hanging right there in the corner. Okay so let's walk over to the bisque shelves. This is where we keep our inventory and our inventory is low right now but we maintain a certain amount of inventory of each product here at bisque level. And the reason that we do that is so when somebody orders, we can pull it off the bisque shelf, glaze it, and get it out the door as quickly as possible. Now it isn't a hundred percent because of course we can't keep these at the perfect level of inventory because you know you'll predict that you'll sell 2,000 mugs of a particular mug and then you actually sell 3,000 and you get behind and you only have one press and one person throwing or whatever. But it's not a perfect system, but it's a good system. And what we do is, let me see if I can find one that makes sense here. Um, let me see if I can get over here. So see this card? This is a card that separates between the minimum and maximum of these particular mugs. So if I want to keep on my shelf a dozen, a minimum of a dozen mugs of this particular type. We put a dozen mugs to the right of it and the extras to the left of it. And when we use up all the ones to the left of the card, then we put that particular product back into production. It's called pool combine. It's a system that is part of the lean model. So that is how we try to keep inventory. It is January right now, so our inventory is low. Some things we have nothing of. And so we are just getting started to reproduce some of this pottery. So some of the shelves are very bare. And then we've got lots of some other things like apple bakers and, and those are lamp bases that I'm doing for a company. But anyway, that's the way that is. So we're walking further through the process and these are actually boxes we just packed that are going out to uncommon goods they go out by freight and they have a very specific way that they want them to go out so that are sitting here in this area so just to orient you again there's the door clear down the hallway that I started you at and we are now in back about two-thirds of the studio so this is our packing area the carts come over here out of the kiln usually on that little cart right there these shelves here are shelves for things that we have pulled for specific orders that haven't been packed yet. And then that is actually our mechanical room for, uh, you know, our air compressor. We have a great big, well, I'll take you in here. Um, so it's our heating and cooling system. Um, our panel, electrical panels, there is our air compressor. We have a very nice size air compressor, which we really need. And then I'm on a well, so we have a filtration system. And um, and then in this corner is the, uh, the heating and cooling system. 
but something you have to have and plan for. Um, but th that's where it is for us. Okay, so we have a roll of foam here that's in use. We have a skin machine. We skin um, pots that go out to wholesale. We use standard side boxes and boards. And if you're interested in the skin machine, may, um, let me know and I will videotape us uh, skin packing. It's a great system where two pots can't touch each other and break because they hit up against each other because everything's separated by the skin packaging process. So this is one of the ways we sand the bottom of the pots because we have an air compressor. We put a sander on there and sand the bottoms. We have also switched over to over here, this um, paddle system, uh, sand paddle system, which is kind of nice. So we like both of those. Uh, okay, so here's our side door. This is where our post lady comes. When we send out retail uh, orders from our website, it goes out this side door. She comes, pulls her uh, little postal truck right up here and out the door it goes. And that's why our packing and our sanding and everything is here. We have a small back stock area. We try not to keep much back stock because that wouldn't be lean. Um, but we do have a small back stock area here. So you're seeing cubbies also everywhere where we have boxes. Um, we have our roll of paper. And then this is uh, a window that opens up to our gallery. So we wanted people to be able to see through the window and see what we were doing with our production and, um, my husband and I brainstormed and fussed back and forth with each other about what was what made the most sense. I wanted the studio and the gallery more open. He wanted it more closed. We did it more closed up like this. And actually for COVID, it's been ideal because we have been able to keep our customers safe and um, more limited to exposure from us. And the other thing is, is if you can see there, I put up a great big plastic shower curtain across the window. And that is helping us keep clay dust from getting into our gallery. Until I did that, we were, oh gosh, we'd dust one day and the next day there'd be dust on the pottery we were displaying again. And so I thought initially if I just turned off the venting system in the gallery that that would quick kick up the dust, but it didn't. So this has helped by putting this, all it is is a shower curtain that we can push aside when a customer comes in. Um, during COVID, a lot of times we didn't even push it aside. We just slid pots and money back and forth underneath it. Above that, I have more storage where we're keeping all our egg crates. We use egg crates on the bottoms and the tops of boxes to create that two inch padding between um, pieces and the outside box, which is required by the postal service. So this is our checkout counter. And there's a rolly table over here. There's more cubbies. We have cubbies everywhere. And the cubbies have all been made for a specific, specific size for a specific box. All the, And they're all labeled too. Like over here, this is where our 24 by 18 by 24 boxes are. And that's the size, standard size box we use for shipping out wholesale. So that's just an example. Okay, so around this way, this is our little kitchen for me and my staff. And we just have a little um, microwave, a little refrigerator, and just a little table there to uh, sit at. So that's the kitchen, and that's where we hang up our coats and everything. Um, and then I'm going to back out here so you can see. So this is the side door that pots go out through the postal service. Here is the window into our gallery. Here is the doorway to get into the gallery. And so I will walk you through that. All right, so I'm gonna walk into the gallery. It's here to the left. And our gallery is quite small, actually. It's about 13 by 13 or 14 by 14, something like that. I take my shoes off when I usually walk in because I don't wanna track clay dust into it. So my husband um, does woodworking and he took live edge, it's just live edge oak, 
and he ran it through the planner and I didn't even want it finished. I was like, just don't finish it. I want the log edge raw and that's what we are displaying on. And then I ran LED lighting underneath each of the shelves just to give us more light. And then to break it up, there is a hutch that he built that is for sale. We have a table in the middle that we change out frequently depending on the season. Um, there's more shelving back there. What you see hanging are um, pendant lights that I made. They're made out of porcelain. They're real thin porcelain, hand thrown. They have mountain designs on them and they're translucent. There are um, a couple windows in the front of the gallery and I um, had a company come in and put our logo on the door, which is quite lovely, I think. I love seeing that because um, nothing like owning your own business and seeing your business name on the front door. So this is the other side of the gallery. We will display from the floor up just because we need to use every inch of it. I've actually removed some pieces up high and we are gonna add some new pieces up there. So we aren't done with what the gallery um, is going to look like for the year. But, and then this is the window or the view back into the studio through the checkout window that I was telling you about. So going out of the gallery, um, straight ahead is our bathroom. We usually have a beautiful live edge wood um, mirror here, but I just sold it the other day. So my husband's going to be making another nice live edge mirror that has our tile in it. Um, so we just have uh, a vessel sink I threw, our bathroom pumps that we make, a, a tray there for um, people to, uh, you know, use paper towels to wash your hands off with, and, um, and eventually we'll have another mirror up there. Um, this is uh, handicap uh, compliant. We had to cover up the um, plumbing there in case somebody had no feeling in their legs, you have to put insulation for the plumbing so they don't get burned on the piping if they're using hot water. So there's our little bathroom. Let me have a, you know, one of the lamps I made. So I'm gonna spin around. And then the last room we have that you haven't seen is our office. And we're considering actually taking the office out and utilizing it as more um, storefront. So we're attempting right now to go to a smaller desk and see how small we can go and can we um, move all of our office stuff out to the packing area. And if we can stay on such a small desk and stay efficient, I think we're going to bust this one wall out and uh, make our gallery bigger. But this is our little, our little office. And I have, we have a couch. Once in a while, somebody gets tired of not feeling well, and so we have a couch there. But most of the time, the dogs are usually sleeping on that couch. So I'm gonna spin back around and head back into the packing area. And that is a whole tour of the inside of the studio. And there it is down the hallway. So we sit on four acres. I'll go outside real quick just so you can see what it is like outside. This is going out the side door. We have a gravel um, parking lot. Of course, we had to do handicap access right here. And like I said, I have four acres. Back there, you can pass my car. You can see some new stakes, I think. That's where my husband's um, building's gonna go up for his woodworking. We're gonna put up four more buildings and turn our four acres into an artist community is the plan and we've got some beautiful property a clear back to the tree line and we are right off of i-26 exit 18 and um this is actually a state road it's a dead end state road but it is a state road that's right here in front of our property and then i'm just going to walk around here so you can see how beautiful it is and get a front view of what the customers see when they come in. Of course, it's winter time and the flower boxes don't look so hot, but in the winter or in the summer, the flower boxes are all blooming. And um, there you can see the logo on the window. And it's a wonderful, beautiful little studio that I am uh, quite proud of. And um, 
honored to have and actually quite surprised that we ever got here because it was never my intent to ever own a building like this or uh, I just didn't think it was in me but one thing led to another over the 25 years and here we are on this beautiful Pisa property so we have a lovely lovely mountain view actually in the winter it's a 360 degree view if you could believe it or not um, but that is it for Salvaterra Padre. If you have any questions, want, to, want some more details about any part of our uh, process, the building, what we did, that kind of thing, um, just let us know. We'll be happy to answer your questions. We really have very few secrets around here. I think we'll tell you about anything about, except for our, maybe a couple of glazed recipes. And um, that is it i hope you enjoyed it and maybe it'll inspire you to do something like this um you just never know where you might get when you are doing something you absolutely love so this is sue with salpatera pottery from weaverville north carolina and we will keep the videos coming as much as we can during our production and we will see you next time thank you bye